Mark and Jada here. You are tuning into the God Bull Life Podcast, where anything goes because love covers all. God uses marriage to grow us and accomplish his will. He's got plans for your marriage, too. Previously on the God Bull Life Podcast. I would say when I actually started dealing with the thing, the cheating, uh, it heavily affected like our like romantic part of our relationship yeah. like our intimacy everything Facts. like Facts. we were not <clears throat> intimate for like a year and a half well then as soon as as soon as we did Sarai came no 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 no, 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 no. one time yeah, and that's that how we had good. Sarai yeah li- li- like literally. literally this is Mark and Jade and this is the God Boat Life podcast even now thinking back that brings it kind of back to like the cheating thing because mm-hmm. it was always like Hurt my, I'm hurting my person. Mm-hmm. It was beyond me at that point. Like, okay, Mark, like you good, mm-hmm. but that's your person. I, I didn't want to hurt you. Mm-hmm. That was always the thing where like God would say that and I'd be like, ah, oh, shoot. So mm-hmm. this one time we were. This was like one of our first times without the kids. Yeah, first time without what well, the Sarai. kids Sarai at the yeah. time. We're married, mm-hmm. um, and. I'm like, okay, I did it. And God's like, you got to tell your wife. And I'm like, God, I ain't about to tell her now. Like, we just got to the hotel. We stand there for the weekend. We got dinner re- reservations at this fire steakhouse in Fort Worth. We ain't got no, we ain't got Sarai. Right. Like, why would I ruin that <laughs> to tell her this? And it was so heavy on me. That I had, that I finally was like, okay, you know what? I gotta do it. And because I waited this long, it's gotta be right now. We're at this fire coffee shop. Love coffee, shout out Ascension. Drinking my beautiful nitro cold brew with some vanilla and a little bit of oat milk, like I like mm-hmm. it. And we bought a water and it's nice and breezy. It's a gorgeous, it's a beautiful again, day sun shining, gorgeous day, okay? Yep. Gorgeous. And she sits down with her coffee, <laughs> and I, I said, "Babe, um, I um, I jacked off. I think it was like last few days ago, or last week, something." And she didn't take it as seriously as I was, because mm-hmm. I'm like, she was kind of like, "Okay," and I'm like, "Nah, because you don't know what I've been through to even get to this point. Tell you, so you give me something more than a no, nah. <laughs> like." I'm, I need you right now. Like, I need something. I'm struggling. And, and you needed something so bad that in that moment, I just was like, not trying to give. Because I had chosen not to deal spirit. with things that were hard. Holy so spirit. I was still choosing not to deal with it. But, but mm. I can't remember how we ended up separating. Oh, I'm about to sit. Okay, go into Tell that me. part. Now. Quick segue back to the word because we were talking about the miracles. You said something like, um, and why they only tell us about these miracles and like did Jesus only do miracles for like these types of people? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, no, it, it, Jesus healed a whole bunch of people, but we hear about the ones who were so tired, mm-hmm. whose faith was at such a place to where they knew they needed God. They mm-hmm. they didn't need they didn't question it, mm-hmm. they didn't, they'd already tried it. Everything that they knew, yeah, I was at that point. Yeah, that I tried everything that I knew to do within myself. That now I'm like, okay, I, I need something because this is this is killing me. Mm-hmm. And basically, we got to an argument off of that because I was mad because she wasn't giving me right. nothing. And she and was honestly, like, truly, I will say this though, I, I I wasn't dealing with it. That's a B. I didn't know how to. So even and the amount of empathy, because I'm like, we've had this conversation before, right? And you ain't even go research, right? It. Like you didn't even. I like, didn't Google because it. I <laughs> nothing. I did not understand. Like this is after the marriage counseling. This is you know I still did not get it because when it comes to porn and that addiction, like as a woman, as his wife, I just did not understand. So I didn't know what he needed. I could tell he needed something. And I tried to be like chill because I didn't, that was the only thing I knew to do, which was not 
like overreact or like kind of go crazy because like I felt like, okay, I appreciate him telling me the truth. So I'm going to like soften it by not having this big reaction or not doing the most or getting upset about it. I was mad about that. I and was he like, was mad about that. Nah, so it just. <laughs> I need some better energy because <laughs> you over here beating something that deserves a 10 or two. In this, right. This and so it was just not, it wasn't matching up. So we get so pissed. <laughs> then this is also me during this time too. I would cherish these moments so much that I'm like, I don't want nothing to happen. Right. That would mess this up. Like, I don't... I don't want to waste the date day, the date night. I don't want to waste this one moment. Back then, being very honest, I was like, we about to have some amazing sex Mm -hmm. tonight in a hotel room with no kids. So I don't want to mess that up. And at that point, it was done. (laughs) So, (laughs) So we separate for like two, three hours. I went walking around and she had a a massage appointment, actually. Yeah. And so she texted me like uh, maybe two hours later and was like, hey, can we meet up and talk? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, you know, cool. We meet up. I'm eating. And she starts like spitting out these facts. And she basically, I could tell that she spent the last two hours on Google. First, you start knowing nothing, but then you come back. In my opinion, as if you were an expert, which pissed me off even more. Listen, because it like, didn't take up. me. Listen, You're not about to tell me. Uh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. But <laughs> well, I've been dealing with for 20 years. It don't take me long to get it, okay? All I had to do in my mind at that time, this is me talking Jade in that moment, not Jade today. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Jade in that like, moment, hey. okay? Because I have grown, okay? But at that time, my, like, okay, I don't know what to do. Let me go to Google. Not let me go to the word. Let me go to Google. <laughs> and Google simply was, enforced mm. every fear, every insecurity, every like unknown that it could with more fear and more anxiety and more like, literally, I was reading stuff. Now, granted, I, I had some sense. So some of the stuff I was reading, I was like, okay, nah, that's I'm not going to go there. But some of the stuff I was like, okay, like this is, this is how I should... I'm supposed to be dealing with this this as like a Christian wife, like blah, blah, blah. And like some of some of the, which is wild now that I think about it, some of the like Christian-based platforms literally were saying like, like you need to you need to express to your husband how angry it makes you. You need to be honest with him about what it makes. And, and I at the time, because I'm, you know more, I guess, more or less naive in, my, in like this whole situation, those things are only say, saying to me, focus on being mad. Focus on being, get him together. Show him what he need to know. Oh, yeah, Show him like, like go do this and do, listen, and like, like a checklist. I'm that's like, where I went with it because I was <laughs> <what>? like, <laughs> I didn't know how else to answer like, to this. Two hours ago, you didn't know nothing <laughs> at all. Now, and then I come back, about, I'm like, well, listen, I got a most of my life like, Google nah. PhD and how to deal with <laughs> porn addiction. <laughs> so clearly, that didn't go well. <laughs> it didn't go well at all. <laughs> and she said the words that I was most afraid to hear that entire. Year, Little moment. We going home. I was like, uh, cause, cause we just checked in. Listen, <laughs> we got dinner. We had a whole dinner like, reservation. So, another night at the that hotel. That was the one thing that I was trying to like. God, just don't, don't say that. Like, we we can fight and then come back together and woo saw and have makeup sex. Great, but anything but let's go home. And literally, she was like, "Yep." And call your mom. We gonna pick up her. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, no." <laughs> We like, literally, no. <laughs> and, but we didn't. But pick up some I was like, okay, it's over. It's You're like getting really done. over. It is like, like done. I said, well, call said your mom right Sarai, now. We going like, to get Sarai. Same, man. Uh, when I get out of this massage, let's go. <laughs> like, God has blessed us. Why are you giving it back? Like, that's what was <laughs> going on in my mind. Why are you giving the blessing back? Like, do you want God to think Listen, that we're not appreciative of the I blessing that he's giving us? I was angry. I was so. Oh, uh, I was so mad that day. Oh, I was I'm so like, mad God, that day. I was so like, mad this that is day. What you had in mind? Oh my we gosh, because no, because <laughs> I was so mad because I was I felt like in the moment that 
I thought that that's what she wanted was like me to care. So my way of not showing like that. that I cared and had empathy was to like give nah, some like, context to like what that. he's going through. Mind you, I, I understand now, like I had no clue what he had been going through. I had no clue. Yet I'm over here trying to tell him, oh, you need to go to this particular type of counselor. You need to go do. Literally, like she was even giving me like worst case and they're like, yeah, like this could turn into that. I'm like, yeah. It was all fear <laughs> and it was all anger. Right so then now? we on the car ride home, and I actually brought this up. Um, this is yesterday when we were talking about this. What? How we had actually, okay, in this same like season, we had been going through some family stuff. And oh yeah. And his mom and I are very close. LaRonda, my mama, I love you. And we were just in a really bad place. Like, we were in a really bad place. And I was in this thought of I'm pregnant so I'm super emotional already and I was so hurt by the situation and the only person I wanted to call was your mom and I want I've I've had this deep need for like a hug like I didn't want and I didn't even want it from you like I wanted it from her and to know that we were not in a place where I felt like she would embrace me that hurt me even more. So we on the way home from Fort Worth, and it's about a 40 minute drive, right, to our house. And I'm sitting in the passenger seat, I'm looking out the window, and I'm just crying, like like slow little tears, because I was just like, my feelings hurt so bad. And I just want to be embraced by like a mom, like I need to be held. And when I wasn't getting that need met, it just made me more angry. It just made me more upset. So at this point, when we get home, like somehow, some way we get into like a full blown curse out yeah. battle match. Like it got actually, actually, actually. So <sighs> I was like, never mind. Actually, this was before we got Sarai because we didn't end up picking her up. No, no, no. We did we? I don't I think we remember. ended up picking her up that night, but we hadn't. Then, because obviously she wasn't here yeah. for that part. Yeah. And yet, I just remember like, in our playroom, <laughs> we, I don't even know why it happened in there. I think I was in there. You came in there to give me a piece of your mind. That's what happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, We had yeah, an yeah. argument. Then we went to different sides of the house, literally. And then you came from your side of the house <laughs> back into my space Listen, riled up. to give me more of your, more of your mind, which was like, even worse than I you mean, left. It was so I, like it going was, several what places would you would think would like help to like calm things down. You came back like on with more fire. I'm like, where did she get? Did she create this fire? Like, like where did she get this I fire from? I had been just I'm talking about the slow tears in the car. Me wanting like his mom wanting support, but not having it. Feeling like I was by myself, not talking to God at all. Right. And this was last year. Yeah. This is last year. And I'm just so oh, this angry. Was this year. Was this it this was year? earlier this year. Yeah, this was like. Oh, April. this was because I was pregnant. Was like yes. April, this yeah. was like six months this ago. Like March, yeah. <laughs> this is six months ago. And like I was so mad. And so I think so much hurt from like just all my stuff because we all I, at that time. This is the lead up to my will breaker. OK, y'all. Mm-hmm. But this situation was like, it just brought out everything. And that's what happens when you don't deal with stuff. It just like piles on top of each other. So when like one of the things get called out, you get all of everything. Like all the pain I had from my dad not being around because my mom was in the military. We was moving around and I didn't get to have access to him all the time. But I still loved him and I still wanted around, but I felt bad about that. Then, I mean, so many things that I'd gone through that I, I realized... I always choose not to deal with. So I just pack it up in that box, stick it in the back and just, you know, but it it festers, it grows. And then it starts getting on to other stuff. And that's what happened in this situation was all of my own crap got attached to that crap. And it just, bleh. and I'm cursing him out, y'all. Like, I'm talking about like. Talk, like, I was cursing me out. She was talking crazy. Like she's cussed me out before, but like she was. This is like a new level. She is. This is like a. Like she would, she wouldn't curse me out before. She would say curse words around stuff that she was saying to me. 
this that she was cursing me out. Like she, it was literally, it wasn't like you acting like, it was like you this. It was just me. Listen. It, was, it wasn't an observation. It was like, just like this who you are. And, and then she storms out, like back to her side. <laughs> She's out of this thing where like she won't let, she'll get what she want to get out and then stop it. And then it's like, oh, yeah, I'm done. I have something Done. too that I'm not going to get to say now because yeah. you're just going to storm out. Mm-hmm. It was that It was that energy. Yeah. And what she didn't know was when she stormed out, I wanted to say, I wanted to come out here and basically replicate the thing that she'd done to me. And God at that moment convicted me and said, no, like you can't do that. Um, the only way to change that is love. And rewind, finally get to her wheel breaker. But, but during this season, like for the same thing that my mom has been to her, my stepdad, who I call dad now as well, was, was that for me. Mm-hmm. And there was this one time, like she was having these bad panic attacks. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I didn't know nothing about panic attacks. Like, I'm anxiety attacks, brother. I knew nothing about anxiety, really. Like, I never, like, looked it up, especially what the Bible says about it. So, like, after, like, one of the bigger ones, I started to do devotions specifically on anxieties so that I was in a better place to help her during these attacks. And during this one crazy one, like, we call for reinforcements, my mom and dad T. And they came over with my sister and, like, on one side of the, one end of the island, um, my mom and Jade are talking on the other end of the island. Me and T are talking, and uh, my sister and my niece got Sarai like, occupying her while we're talking. And my stepdad, my dad, told me a story about how my mom had asked him to do something. And he, was, he did it, but with an attitude. Th- th- that took him back to the little boy. Mm-hmm. And he asked God, like, you know, why do I have this still in me from a kid when I should be in a better, better place mentally to serve my wife. Mm -hmm. And that jump started. God told me after that conversation for the next two weeks, whatever she asked you to do, do it and happily. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started to really serve her happily. And then I learned more about love, what the Bible says about love, first Corinthians 13 love. And that changed my life. Because that was the first time that I seen a love that had nothing to do with deserving. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with what I'm going to get back in return. It it was like, no, as a husband, this is what I've called you to do, whether she's doing it or not. Because you're not doing it because of her. You're doing it because when you see her, you should see me. Mm -hmm. That changed my life. So then it was like, that was the moment when I had to take that training, that knowing that went from Put two weeks action. to months that I had basically not just did it with her, but did it. people come in the house, I'm serving. Mm-hmm. Go to somebody else's house, I'm serving. Out and about with people, I'm serving with love. So that was when God was like, so yeah, you know that love stuff we've been talking about? You've been in training, you've been in the huddle talking about? Now it's time to run the play. And no, she doesn't deserve it. Mm-hmm. Yes, she's disrespected you. Mm-hmm. Yes, she's cursed you out and done all of these things. Yes, today has been terrible. <laughs> terrible. But all of that happened to get to this point. What are you going to do? And we were doing a devotion about love recently where um, Jesus was saying, love your enemies. Um, which at the time was contradictory to what they were teaching in churches. They were teaching in churches, love the people that love you back. And and smite your enemies. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And Jesus was like, no, love your enemies because that's how you show God. Mm -hmm. Anybody can love people that love them back. That ain't doing nothing. Even pagans do that. Mm -hmm. People that don't know no better. People that don't know me at all love people that love them. (laughs) You show me when you love people that are deemed unlovable. Right. Love them people. Right. And like we were in a devotion about that and we were talking about what type of love did Jesus show Paul for Paul to go from killing Christians to saving people. Like, that love, that interaction had to be 
out of this world. Different. So during this position where everything has piled up, God said, what you going to do? And I, I chucked it up. I, you know, I shed my tears and I walked in here and I gave her a hug and said, baby, I love you. And that. Well, I just felt that when I said it. Like, that Oof. just broke me. Mm-hmm. Like, broke. Like, that was my will breaker. Because I, for the first time, was like, huh? You're not coming back at me? Like, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. I'm ramped up. I, I'm warmed up. And he didn't. And I just broke because I was like, how can he do that? Not in a way of like, how, sway, how? No, like, how did you do that? Because it... At that time, I thought, but it was only because all the anger and all the hurt and all the pain was just so loud that I really felt like showing love in those scenarios just was never even an option. It didn't even cross my mind ever to show somebody love when they were coming crazy at me. Never, but the Holy Spirit always is going to give you that out. He's always, but if you allow the voices of those negative thoughts to be louder. The thing that feels the best in your flesh when you're no, angry. That will that will be louder. Like it will be. Exactly. Like, like yes. Like it will be God louder. Is like a whisper, a conscious, yes. uh, gentle. Gentleness. Yes. Yes. And that anger and all the reasons why Screaming. you shouldn't that stuff is gonna be just Screaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why like when he responded with love that day you know, it literally cast out something in me. It, 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 it I don't know what it did. It, it literally, it, I don't know if it just, it felt like a, it's, yeah, when people say like, you know, you know, fight, fight, um, what do they say? Like, d- don't fight fire with fire. With fire yeah. Like you, 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 because all you'll do is have more fire. You know what I mean? Like, and so when he started to show me love in that moment, um, it, it, it kind of started this, this change in me. And there would be multiple more like will breaking points for me up until this point, like how in the last, us, yeah. I would say in the last six weeks, I would say last, you know, cause I went through a whole. Well, I think now for you, it's, it's much like what we're doing. Yeah. And actually like we both, didn't want really any of this. Any of this. And so, <laughs> so the fact been, that we're here yeah, says that moments. we broke our, both of our wills because yeah. it was, like, well, it started, I'll say this. I think for me, the better way to describe the will breaking is like, okay, the will breaking in my professional life, the will breaking in my personal life. Like this was a will breaking moment in my personal life that eventually started to Populate and other, infiltrate everything areas. else yeah. in my life, but it happened here first. And not to say that you need a husband or you need a wife to experience this, but sometimes you need to feel that human interaction. Like it has to be between people. Because I think the other piece of this that we haven't really talked about is this idea that if you we're able to see God in me with all these spirits like taking over, right? And, and you were able to show me love in that, you know, and you love me so much. And I know God loves me more than you love me. God loves you more than the person you think who loves you the most on this planet does. Like God loves you more than that. No. So right. don't think right. that God is going to strike you down for right. something that you've done. Right. Because that would mean, that would be the antithesis of who he is. And he would rather not have that. Right. He would <laughs> rather, he would, he, like, his he does word is so much more valuable on a bigger scale. So like for him to mess you over is mm-hmm. like, um, it, 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 I, I think more of myself right. than that. You know? And you're him. Like you <laughs> yeah. are him. Like the Holy Spirit lives within you. So like 
he doesn't want to shun you. He doesn't want to forsake you. Like he's made uh, you good from the start. Because oh, I didn't look. Let's not get this twisted. I didn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. Mark <laughs> wanted to go and tell her what she wasn't gonna do. Right. To me in my house. That's what Mark wanted. To right. Do. You know, the, all the man bravado was about right. to come out. Like, hey, right. Because right. it's in there. Right. <laughs> but that was a moment where, where, where I got out of God's way. And mm-hmm. that was another one of those, like, kind of sayings that I say every day that came out of that season of our lives was, like, stay out of God's way. Mm-hmm. And me being in God's way would have been coming in here, giving her what I wanted, was thus saith oh. Mark. <laughs> and and <laughs> literally, I would God. have never had that point. I would have never had that moment where, like, something really changed in my heart because I had to experience it physically with me. Say, and, like, that's why people are so important. Like, you just said that because so many people are in a position to be that for somebody else. Right. But they're the not showing God. They're not showing God in those right. moments. So God has given you an opportunity to show him, but you take it as a threat to you. Mm-hmm. And that threat to you becomes more important than you showing him. Yeah. And he put you in that position to say, even though, yes, you deserve this, but God don't do it. God didn't do that to me. Mm. See, because what she didn't, what neither one of us realized was, especially me, when she didn't leave me after I cheated multiple times, because that was, like I told her then, multiple times, that was love. So how does God show me that? Then I'll turn around and give her me. Mm-hmm. So it's easier to do what God has told you to do when you remember and you ain't have to, I didn't have to look that far back to remember <laughs> yeah. when God did it for me. Right. So who am I to not take that, that gift that he gave me of grace and give it to her as well? Right. Um, right. So yeah, like, like people are looking to, if you hurt, you can't heal yourself. Right. Like you can't. <laughs> mm-hmm. look, so we're in position to show God to people every single day day mm-hmm. we have that choice to show god to other people mm-hmm. and it's so important that we get out of ourselves mm-hmm. how we feel mm-hmm. what we think people deserve mm-hmm. wanting to be in that judge seat so bad yep. that we take a step back and remember you know what god so grace for me on that because shoot i should have i definitely should have died there <laughs> <laughs> i definitely shouldn't have Shouldn't have still got that promotion. I definitely mm-hmm. shouldn't have got that opportunity to see my child again. I definitely should. Like, we all have all these moments where we shouldn't have, but we did. Mm-hmm. That's enough by itself to give to somebody else and change their life and show yeah. them God because that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. The harvest is plenty. Yeah. The workers are few. Yeah. The harvest is people. The workers are the people that say, I don't want to be working. Right. But there's work to be done, mm-hmm. so I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. And really do it and really live it and really understand that it doesn't mean you have to be perfect. Like, you don't have to fit some, like, You're far mold. from that because I wouldn't, I mean, like, the porn thing would continue. Right, until, like, I, I, I'm not going to lie. Last few I, I would, I prayerfully, I never curse you out again. Yeah. I say I'm never going to do that again. But it could happen. It could happen. And the reality is it's a daily thing. It's a daily it's thing. Daily. And die that's die to self daily. Yeah. Die to self daily. Day. As in, break your will daily and choose God's will. And God's will is always gonna be the thing that produces his fruit. Do you realize what? Segue, boom. What? As much as I did want to tell you that day about porn, God needed me to that day to get to that point yeah so that that fruit can be shown so that you could have something the to ultimate eat. way because mm. it wow. was a high stakes situation whenever you told me about the cheating and it was a high stakes situation when i was cursing you out and you responded to me with love and that's that's why it's it, when these hard things happen, like when you have these hard conflicts and hard, just like things you have to deal with, it doesn't, it's not in vain, right? Like it's not as if, 
you know, you have to be thrown away or you're no longer valid we or you're about no that longer the worthy. Like, it's not the person. We are not, not the person. We are not battling yes. against flesh and blood. It's not the person. No. God is in all of us. Yes. People, there are spirits out here that are That taking, will fill you. So yeah. either it's going to be God's will, the Holy Spirit, and the else. fruits of his Holy <laughs> Spirit, or it's going to be something else. And all demonic spirits... All demonic spirits do not look bad or feel bad no. all the time. No, the but devil it, ain't running out here with a pitchfork nah, and, nah. and red draws on. Listen, like, nah, a lot of not, times <laughs> the, the enemy is, is someone who's who just gorgeous. Beautiful. Just got like, money. All that. Just like popping, yeah. like running the world, like got it. But it's something off about them. Like, they are doing things to reach success. It's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. And God their integrity yeah, is questionable. In like, mm -hmm. God in it, it, and, and that's why, like, it's so common, I feel like, in the world we live in to, like, mm. not trust anybody and feel like everything is, like, too good to be true and, like, everything's a scam. Because a lot of things are. A lot of things are. <laughs> because yeah, a lot of people don't realize that by carrying vengeance in your heart, carrying uh, fear in your heart, like even the fear that somebody else like caused, just you carrying that fear in you will populate other no, negative is. things. Yep. Like you start making decisions out of fear and you say, oh, I'm going to take this job because it's a stable paycheck. Well, you're taking this job only for the stable paycheck? Did you talk to God about that? Because it's gonna come with a whole because bunch it may of other stuff. it may bring you a steady paycheck, but it's gonna make you go crazy. Mm -hmm. It's gonna keep you from your family. Mm -hmm. It's gonna distract you from the real purpose in your life that may not be as clean cut and like worldly version of like stable. Because truly, stability don't even exist in this world. But like contentment, that's, contentment that's baby. a whole other thing. But truly, like. We make a lot, we, so much of how we live in this society, especially in America, is based off of fear. It's based off of, if I don't get it, somebody else is going to get it. If I don't take it, somebody else is going to take it. And God says we don't have to live like that. It's already written. Like, we don't have to live like that. Sorry, sorry. Like, if you, if, what is that? What is that scripture? And I feel like this is a good place to, to end it on, is where... I think it's in Matthew where Jesus is saying, you know, if a soldier asks you to carry his armor for a mile, carry it for two miles. Oh, if yeah. someone asks you for your shirt, give them your give coat. Them your like, shirt and your coat. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah. and it doesn't say like, you know, check if they're honest and See check if, if they they're valid. No, give it. If somebody asks you for something, give it because you lack nothing. If you believe in Jesus, you lack nothing. If if you're you're a lender, not a borrower, mm -hmm. like you're you're flowing abundantly, mm -hmm. always. Like that's how God is. That's how He works in our lives when you are under His covering and you're operating in His will. But like if you don't know whether or not you're operating in God's will, that means you gotta talk to God about it. Because if Bless you're confused, you that's a spirit of the enemy. God is not confusion at all, ever. God will never make you feel confused. God will never give you a fear that stops you from doing something. Now, having a fear of God is more of a reverence for him, not a fear like I'm scared of God. No, like, no. But a lot of us operate and walk and make decisions from that fearful place thinking, mm -hmm. oh, I just want to be good for God. I just want to do the things I'm supposed to do. But in all actuality, that's a fruit of the enemy the whole time. You only go into church because you're scared about how people are going to think about you if you don't go to church. Like, come on. That's ungodly, that's what that is. It's an ungodly ambition. It's an it's a ungodly ambition. So it's about the relationship that you have with him. And that's what it takes to change your life, to change yeah, your family's like, this, lineage. And none of this is possible without God. None of it. And that's cliche, but that... To like that has been our our story. Yeah. Everything yes. that we are today, everything that we have at this very moment is is from God. And, and we, we talk to him about it before. We have, yeah, we and we talk the, to him through it and we talk to him after it. Like we are in relationship and we are allowing him and his will to guide us. So that is why you see this podcast here, because neither one of us wanted to do this. 
Nope. Like a year ago. <laughs> wasn't nope. even thinking about I it. I mean, like, she wouldn't even let me say the M word, ministry. Like, she was like, no, nah, no. Nah, we black, like nah, Martin. We, we, nah. we, we ducking that one. Nope. But yeah, um, um, you can't out escape self. God's will, though. Getting you can't escape self. the purpose on your life. You can run from it for years and years and years and years and years, and then you confuse us to, dang, I keep getting rejected. I keep getting in these situations where I feel like I'm not, I'm somewhere I ain't supposed okay, to be. Okay, you're going into. Okay, we're going, listen, you, you know I can go on and on. Book. So we're going to end it on that. Yes. Um, Want to pray? Sure. Pray. All right. Mm. Lord, we thank you for today's just conversation, the exposure that is going to be going on within our hearts, God, and every single person that's listening and watching, God, I just pray that you reveal yourself to them in a real way, in a very real way. Lord, I pray that they have a newfound passion and and desire for you and to understand who you are and to realize your power and just your goodness and everything that you have to offer. That's already ours. It's already ours. We just got to connect with that knowing. And so God, I just thank you for allowing us to be your vessels and to and, and, and allowing us to lead people in this way, God. We understand that that's what you've asked us to do. And God, we, we thank you for the provision. We thank you for you operating in us in ways that we don't understand sometimes, but they're always good because they're in your will. Lord, everyone listening here, watching, God, I pray that they continue on with a newfound love for you and a newfound love for the people in their life, God, and that, I, and that they reconsider how they've categorized people in their hearts, Lord. People that they've thrown away, God, I pray that you reopen that, that, that book for them and you have them look back and say, what did I do wrong in this situation? I'm not a victim. We thank you for these things, Lord, and we also thank you for your son, because none of this is possible without him. So we thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. You did that thing. Yeah, and yeah. here we are being able to just bask in it all because of your sacrifice. And we can't wait to see you. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, go ahead. I want to say a special prayer for marriages. Um, God, I thank you for marriage. Thank you for what you're doing through marriage and in marriage, Father God. I thank you that even people who are dealing with things in their marriage, who feel like they're at the brink of ending their marriage, God, we rebuke that in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for strengthening marriages, Father God, and for showing that love has the power to conquer everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. See y'all in the next one. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. We so appreciate your support and we'd love for you to leave us a review wherever you are listening and also visit us on social media. You can find us at Mark Z. Godbolt and Jade Godbolt on Instagram as well as The Godbolt Life on Instagram.